starting with Team Sween. They look good to finish either first or second in Pool A as they carry a strong 15 and 3 map count against Pro League qualifier teams at CWL Las Vegas. They did go 2 and 9 against those top 4 teams. So they had numerous opportunities to take a crack at those top teams and secure a top four placing, which would have been pretty incredible for this roster to finish top four. But they were just short at top six, and they fully expect to finish first or second in this pool. They're strong in all three game modes with a 10 and 7 respawn record and 4 and 4 SD record at CWL Las Vegas. Overall, their biggest slayer is Nolson who carries a 1.21 overall KD, but they're also carried by Dylan, who's been a strong S&D prospect with a 1.33 KD at Vegas. On the negative side of things, Quicker is only posting a 0.81 overall KD, but if Team Sween plays like they did at Vegas, they should be able to handle everyone in this pool, or at the very least go 6-1 and, and secure that top two placing. Team Reciprocity is one of the interesting storylines in this season, with four European players teaming up with Dens, an Australian who formerly played for Mindfreak, moving to a team house in Las Vegas. They finished top 12 at CWL Las Vegas, behind an 11 and 13 map count against Pro League qualifying teams. Their struggles were in S and D where they went 8-8 eight eight map count in respawns, but 2-5 in s &D. In respawns, surprisingly, their team actually ranked 17th out of 22 teams in KD, with Wuskin dropping a massive 1.22, but all four of his teammates, Shawnee, Zed, Tommy, and Denz, below 0 0.92. In s &D, the team does need to improve, as Tommy had one of the 10 worst overall KDs from CWL Las Vegas, Wuskin dropped a pitiful .74 in s and and Shawnee was the only player above one with a 1.10. So for this team, an improvement in s and and a continued success in respawn because this team has lots of slaying power looks good for Team Reciprocity to finish top two, but if they do fall to that double elimination bracket, they still have the slaying power necessary to squeeze out a spot in the CWL Pro League. FaZe Clan and its large fan base is going to be scrutinized heavily during this event as they made one of the high profile roster changes after CWL Las Vegas. At Vegas, they get a disappointing top 16 placing but still went 10 and 11 in map count against Pro League qualifying teams. They went 3-6 and six in hardpoint, where they struggled the most, but still were solid with 4-3 and three in search, 3-2 three and two in control. Now, in hardpoint, Methods dropped to 1.11, Attach was also at 1.11, Priesta was even at 1.08, but Zuma was hurting the team at a .74 hardpoint KD. In S&D, the team was similar, actually, where Methods was only at a 1.21, and Attach, Zuma, and Crowder, which is the new name for replays, all were below 1.0 KD, even though they were a much stronger S&D team. So FaZe Clan is a strong candidate to bounce back and really have a good event here at Pro League Qualifying, as it seems like their KDs just don't quite match their performance at CWL Las Vegas, and it felt like they were playing a lot of close maps, and they're a much better team than the number three seed necessarily. But Methods was the number one Respawn KD, I think overall KD for FaZe Clan, and he was dropped in favor of Celium. Celium being one of those young Black Ops 3 S&D stars that has continued to wait and has now turned 18 and is ready to try and make a Pro League qualifying run with FaZe Clan, but is obviously untested. And it's going to be fascinating to watch how well Celium performs and how well the rest of the team performs without Methods, who had the most slaying power on the team, but there were rumors of him not being necessarily a team player, with him now being dropped from two you know, large orgs in a row. So watch FaZe Clan to really make a push for top two in this pool and really improve on a poor Vegas performance. Project... 18 went to CWL Vegas under Mazer Gaming, and they had a pretty solid 10 and 15 map count against Pro League qualifying teams. 
but they actually went three and four in search and destroy, but zero oh and seven in hardpoint at CWL Vegas. Search and destroy, they were led by strong performances by Zaptius and Apox. Meanwhile, in respawn, all five of their players were below 1.0 KD, with Teddy Rex being one of being the second worst overall KD at the event, dropping a .79 in respawn and a miserable .64 in search and destroy. So for Project 18 to really shine and make a push at top two or even qualify for the league, they're going to have to win more hard points and start clutching up. And we're looking for an improved performance from Teddy Rex as well because he may end up being the fifth KD on this team, but you can't be performing that poorly. And it's going to be interesting to watch if Project 18 really has what it takes to be a pro league team. FaZe Clan Black is getting a lot of attention, being in the same pool as FaZe Clan. They will play each other on the Alpha stream, I believe, for the first matchup of this event. Uh, FaZe Clan Black went 6-8 and eight in against the Pro League qualifying teams in map count. They lost to Mind Freak, they lost to Team Heretics, but they also beat Mazer Gaming, which we just mentioned, Project 18, and Movistar Riders. So the roster of Mosh, Asim, Phantoms, Tish, and Gravity is going to make some noise, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can rise to the top and maybe snag a higher spot, a higher seed than where they're listed right now at fifth, and whether this team really has what it takes to make the Pro League. Team 3G was known as Team Divine during CWL Vegas, and they had a pretty incredible run. They were the number four overall seed in the open bracket. However, they lost to a number 189 seed in winner's round three and had to win five straight games in loser's bracket to reach this stage. And here they are in Pro League qualifying, not expected to do much. However, they are flying a bit under the radar. They made two roster changes, surprisingly. They picked up Endura for bids. They picked up Keza for Nevo. This team, led by Nial, uh, could make some noise, but certainly not a lot of high expectations for these Europeans. Lastly, at the bottom of Group A is Enigma 6. They had an 0-4 map count against the Pro League qualifying teams and are total underdogs heading into this. However, they are an org that we have seen in the Pro League before, and we've certainly seen players like General, Diabolic, and Cade play well at these open LAN events. They've got a lot of experience. This is General keeping the same roster together. So it's going to be interesting to see if Enigma 6 really surprises us and is one of the dark horse teams that sneaks their way into the league or if there's going to be continued disappointment for the Enigma 6 roster. Also, keep your eyes on Frosty. Frosty is a Halo professional that has moved to Call of Duty and plays under Enigma 6. We didn't get to see enough of him at Vegas, but you're going to get to see a lot of him and how good he really is playing against these big teams in Pool A. So, looking back over Pool A, in my opinion, I think Team Sween is going to easily grab either the number one or number two spot in this pool, and that other easy, that other league qualifying spot will be up for grabs between Team Reciprocity and FaZe Clan, and that should be a pretty exciting battle between those two. Looking at the first day of matches, the most exciting matches for me in Pool A will be Team Sween against Team Reciprocity because they are the two best teams in the pool going up against each other, and the winner of that matchup will certainly be in the driver's seat to lock up a pool play spot in that top two. But I'm also going to be looking at Project 18 taking on FaZe Clan Black. These are the four and five seeds. Both these teams are sort of in the middle. They're better than some of these other squads and they've got a lot of hype building for them to really make a league push. So this matchup between them is going to decide who's for real, who's going to challenge that FaZe Clan team swing, that top three, and who's not really so hot. So it's going to be an interesting matchup and one of those early decider matchups between what team is not going to shoot for that top two and what team's really going to get that momentum rolling for a top two push, which will be incredibly difficult in this pool. I do still think it's highly likely that FaZe, Reciprocity, and Sween will grab those two spots in some combination. Thanks for watching this video. Drop a follow on Twitter at mstrite61 and keep up with that Reddit content as well from mstrite61.